Hi, um, I'm Mari Mino Kenodson. I'm a pathologist with a special interest in pancreatic pathology. Today, I will talk to you about an instructive case of intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm of the pancreas, IPMM. IPMM is a tumor that grows within the main pancreatic duct and where its branches characterized by the production of mucin, that is thick fluid, by the tumor cells. IPMNs are important because some of them progress to invasive cancer if they are left untreated. Now, a growing number of patients are being diagnosed with an IPMN. Of those, the majority is identified incidentally, often by abdominal CT scans and are taken for indications unrelated to pancreatic disease. However, some patients present with related symptoms, including abdominal pain, weight loss, and jaundice. Interestingly, patients with an IPMM sometimes present with a symptoms secondary to acute pancreatitis and recurrent pancreatitis, even though they may not have significant history of alcohol drinking. Now, there are several classifications in IPMM. Of those, epithelial subtype, that is based on cytomorphologic features of the lining epithelium of the involved ducts, consists of gastric, intestinal, pancreatic biliary, and oncocytic types. Of those, the majority of IPMNs are classified into either gastric or intestinal type. Gastric type usually present with a small peripheral cyst and follows a benign clinical course. Conversely, intestinal type IPMM often manifests as a large lesion involving the main pancreatic duct, and the majority exhibits high-grade dysplasia, i.e. in situ carcinoma, with or without invasion. Recently, we have reported the association of acute pancreatitis and or recurrent pancreatitis with the intestinal type. Today, I'm showing such an example. The patient is a 66-year-old male with history of pancreatitis and pseudo cyst formation. He underwent Roux and Y procedure in 1997 but had another episode of acute pancreatitis in 2006. Now, he presents with 10-day history of loose clay-colored stools, jaundice, pruritus, and weight loss, but denies fever, nausea, vomiting, or abdominal pain. His blood tests reveal hyperbilirubinemia and high transaminases and suggestive of the obstructive of the bile duct. His past medical history is remarkable for repeated episodes of acute pancreatitis. He is obese and was diagnosed to have diabetes mellitus in 2002 that has worsened over the past six months. He also carried the diagnosis of bicuspid aortic valve aortic root dilatation, aortic insufficiency, and diastolic heart failure, as well as barred esophagus. Again, he underwent Roux y in 1997 for pancreatitis and pseudocyst formation. He is a retired environmental operation inspector. He used to smoke but quit 38 years ago. He drinks one glass of wine every night, but is not considered to be a heavy drinker. There is no significant family history, including pancreatic cancer. Imaging study performed in December 2009 shows coarse calcifications in the pancreatic tail that may be a sequel of prior pancreatitis without other significant findings. However, the subsequent abdominal CT scan performed in April 2011 reveals an increase in the size of pancreatic head, 
that is marked by an orange circle, and diffuse dilatation of the main pancreatic duct that is pointed by blue arrows, as well as the calcifications of the pancreatic tail. Taking a closer look at the CT scan, a 4.9 times, 4.6 times, 3.0 centimeter mass is identified in the pancreatic head with associated pancreatic and bile duct dilatation indicated by blue and red arrows respectively. Upper GI endoscopy reveals dilated major ampulla that is an old outlet of pancreatic and bile ducts to the duodenum with exuding thick mucin reminiscent of a fish mouth. Subsequent endoscopic ultrasound confirmed the presence of mass in the pancreatic head that shows a mixed solid and cystic appearance. The main pancreatic duct marked by a yellow arrow is 9.7 mm in diameter. In the normal condition, it measures less than 5 mm and thus the, this patient's pancreatic duct is significantly dilated. The current clinical guidelines for the management of IPMM recommends the patient with cystic lesion of the pancreas who presented with obstructive jaundice and or significant dilatation of the main pancreatic duct undergo resection of the pancreatic tissue with IPMM since the risk of malignancy or malignant transformation of such cases is high. Accordingly, the patient underwent whipple resection, i.e. Pancreato, uh, pancreatic duodenectomy. Gross examination of the uh, resected pancreas shows marked dilatation of main pancreatic duct that is marked by blue arrows from the uh, resection margin to the ampulla that is marked by an asterisk. Typically, the pancreatic tissue that shows gross abnormality is completely submitted for microscopic examination. A representative microscopic section shows that not only the main pancreatic duct, but also many of its branches are dilated with papillary epithelial proliferation indicated by red circles. Moderate power magnification on the left shows that the duct lining is replaced by a viriform epithelial proliferation. High power magnification on the right reveals that the neoplastic epithelium consists of tall columnar cells with elongated nuclei with stratification and mucin in the apical aspect of the cytoplasm that is marked by blue arrows. Immunostains for glycoproteins reveal that the epithelial cells are marked by MUC5AC, that is a hallmark stain of IPMM, as well as MUC2, intestinal glycoprotein, and CDX2, an intestinal transcription factor. The results are consistent with intestinal type IPMM. The duct lining epithelium exhibits a spectrum of dysplasia from intermediate grade, shown on the left, to high-grade dysplasia on the right. High-grade dysplasia is characterized by small but complex villi with high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and the lack of nuclear polarity. In this patient, in addition to the main and branch duct involvement, there are scattered acellular mucin pools marked by red L's in the left-hand side slide. As shown on the right, the mucin pools are not lined by epithelial cells, consistent with mucin extravasation secondary to rupture of branch ducts, but not invasive carcinoma. In addition, there are few large collections of inflammatory cells indicative of resolving uh, abscesses. The findings are consistent with the patient's history of repeated pancreatitis. In summary, the resected pancreas exhibits IPMM of intestinal type with high-grade dysplasia that involves both main and branch ducts. Thorough examination of the specimen confirms 
no invasive carcinoma. The tumor is completely removed and no metastasis is identified in 39 examined lymph nodes. The lack of invasive carcinoma and or metastasis and the complete resection of the uh, tumor likely indicates favorable outcome of the patient. This is an important case that illustrates acute pancreatitis and or repeated pancreatitis may be a sign of IPMM, especially in patients without significant alcohol history. In such cases, the IPMM is often of the intestinal type that typically involves the main pancreatic duct, and therefore, it is an operative indication. Thank you very much for your time.